Welcome back! So, a new update is out for the toolkit with a lot of new stuff. And I've been working on this for the last uh, nine months or so, so there's a lot of new additions. A lot of things have changed, and I will need to uh, make multiple videos probably to go through all of it. And in this first video, I'm just going to briefly go through the main additions. Uh, and, well, one of the main things you can see here is multi-level grids, or grids uh, with several levels stacked on top of each other. These are generated automatically uh, based on the meshes placed in the level. Uh, another change is uh, that the artificial intelligence has improved markedly. Uh, so, um, yeah, you can see more of that later, uh, but they're in general more clever in how they position, how they move, how they choose to attack, and so on. Uh, another big addition is um, well support for mobile controls. Uh, so we have touch controls for yeah, panning, zooming, rotating, all of that stuff. Uh, there's also included a 2D game example here called Hydra's Lair. Let me show you that real quick. Um, which shows how the toolkit can be used to make a completely different sort of game. In this case, more of like a roguelike, or not really a roguelike, but a dungeon crawler sort of game. Uh, so here I have made like modified versions of a lot of the base blueprints uh, to make a completely different sort of game, which will hopefully be uh, something that you can use as inspiration to tweak and modify the toolkit yourself. Um, and there are a lot of other like smaller changes too, but those are like the main things that I've changed. So first, uh, let us look at the height map stuff, and let me explain that in a bit more detail. So if we take a look at this example map, you can see that there are units placed on the roof, inside buildings, below, uh, and so on. And uh, they can all move down uh, between all of these different levels. And these are not like sub-grid managers or something like that placed into the level. I tried out something like that, but that was uh, too difficult to work with. So what I've made is sort of like an uh, automated system that traces and looks through everything inside this bounding box that you choose the size of. And then it generates uh, automatically uh, multi-level grids based on whatever meshes you have placed in your level. So that's really easy for you guys, even though it was difficult for me to set up, but it is working really well now. And um, let's see, uh, so these could just be regular meshes um, and uh, yeah, whatever you have that blocks uh, path trace really. Though these meshes are special in, uh, or some of these are actors that are walls and roofs that I've modified so that you can see through them if you need to to see inside buildings and, and things like that. I'll, I'll explain how those works later but first let's just uh, let me just show it to you. Um, so but before I start before I hit play uh, these player pawns are all controlled by the AI actually right now so let me fix that. Uh, that's a new thing now that you can set up any unit to be controlled by the AI but I'll uh, explain that later when I go to the new AI stuff. And now let's just increase the move of these oops, so that they can walk across most of the map. And let me show. So uh, this guy he has a really long move and he can move you know inside these buildings on both sides and uh, if I scroll up you will see that the roof becomes visible and now I can walk on top of this or I can zoom through and zoom further and now I can see below this and go here um, if I am outside and I want to go to one of these tiles that I cannot see then I can just mouse over and it also turns invisible and all of this is like I said automatically generated um, the best way to show this is probably to start up a fresh new map and then build it from scratch and you can see how it all works. So let's go new and start a default map. Add. So let's do our basic setup. Just delete these. Let's see, go to the blueprints, place the grid manager. Uh, I like to zero out the location. Everything should work if you don't do that. But it's generally a bit easier to work with 
like this and there might be some bugs when you start adding your own features that might crop up if you don't zero it out so if you don't have any reason to place it somewhere else just keep that zero um, let's increase the size here and place a pawn and everything should be working um, yeah like you can see here uh, by the default now there's like an XCOM style rotation that rotates by 90 degrees this can be changed in the grid camera uh, back to the normal uh, free rotation if you want to but okay so we have a grid and we want this to be a multi-level grid so we set height map to multi-level and we enable auto edge cost based on heights and uh, we'll just keep this I don't want any slower movement I in this map won't bother with that and the max grid height let's keep it at a thousand for now or maybe just make it a bit higher so I can build up oh, there zero is fine I'm not going to go any lower in this map Okay, and the height between levels 200 is pretty good, I think. I mean, these guys are like 180 or something, so if it's much lower than 200, uh, then they will start hitting their heads. You can have this higher, of course, uh, in XCOM 2, I believe it's a lot higher. The distance between various heights is uh, constant, I think, and fairly high. Um, I've tried to make it more flexible here, so you can put it like at whatever you want and uh, I will enable trace for walls I think so when you place a wall that is not actually a tile actor but it's just a regular wall mesh then uh, tiles will trace to one another and see if there is a wall blocking them in which case it will uh, remove the edge between them so now that that is set up let's uh, well I can just to demonstrate just place some completely regular meshes like this is not a tile um, let's see this is not a tile actor this is just the mesh I'll put this up here let's see actually I can show you a tip while I'm at it when you're using square grids it's often good to be able to select like the size of the grid here for uh, the snap sizes so instead of using my like custom snap to grid stuff which is good for most stuff but for meshes it doesn't work of course uh, so then you can go into edit and editor uh, preferences and here in the level editor uh, let's see it's the viewports and it's in grid snapping and you have this uh, decimal grid sizes here and we can just add another one which is 200 in this case and I can select 200 so now it snaps to the grid okay um, so I should not be able to walk on top of this uh, because it's 200 up right um, and actually I should not be able to walk under it either because even though it's 200 up to here then the distance from here uh, the bottom and to the uh, the next place that uh, blocks path trace, which in this case is the grid, is uh, smaller than this value we set up here, the height between levels. So if I click play, you should see that I can't move under it, I can't move on top of it. And the reason I can't move on top of it, of course, is that the distance from the top of this, uh, which is 200, yeah, of course, uh, to the grid is higher than the height impassable cutoff. If I increase this to 300 uh, then you can move on top. This of course you know from previous videos. Um, so let's decrease this again. If I move this so it is uh, quite a bit further up so that the bottom of this uh, to this is more than 200 then we should be able to walk under it. Let's see. And we can. So let's make a really basic multi-level grid. So let's make a few more of these tiles. And we'll make a little staircase. Yeah, this is still too high. Okay, let's 
move this guy closer. So now when we hit play, you can see that we can move under this and this. We cannot move under this since it's too low. We can move on top of these. Uh, I should be able to move further too. It's just that the move of this guy is too low. Yeah, so I can move all the way to, top, to the top. Um, as a tip again that I think I've shown before, but just that you can increase the, si uh, the height of this spline so it looks a bit better. Let's see. So that it doesn't clip through whatever you're moving on top of. There. Okay, so that's like a really basic multi-level grid. It works like this and we can keep building upwards and upwards and have many levels on top of each other if you just uh, keep going like this. Uh, but let's show like these special actors that I've made so you can able to look inside of buildings and things like that. That might not be useful in all, all sorts of games, but it might be useful in some. So we have this height map actor here. Let's see. Let's put the grid snapping to 200 again. There. And let's make it a bit higher. So it looks and behaves exactly like these meshes here, actually. Uh, the only difference is that we zoom in, you can see that it becomes invisible. And at the point it becomes invisible, it is also possible to mouse through it so you can select you know, the tile that is below. Um, so that's the only way this uh, actor here is actually different from like a regular mesh. It also has some of the attributes that Tiles has in that it has an index and that you can uh, have it uh, snap to the custom grids and so on. But uh, uh, mostly it's just like a mesh. And you have these uh, height, actor, uh, height actor walls, which are similar, or they are child actors of this height map actor. They are similar in that they are also turned invisible when you are zooming in far enough, but they are also special in that when you mouse over them, they turn invisible. So that's useful for making walls for buildings and such. Other than that, they're identical to these height map actors. Um, so you can keep adding tiles here, higher and higher, um, and have them crisscrossing on top of each other and all of that, and it should all work. Just make sure that anything that you can walk on top of is blocking path trace in their collision. And anything, any wall that you should not be able to walk through, that is not a wall actor, but it's just a regular mesh. If you're using this uh, trace for walls, uh, variable, then they should be blocking range trace um, for that to be picked up. And um, let's see, am I forgetting something? Yeah, uh, you should of course not place these into your world, you probably, these are just, you know, examples, so just make uh, a child actor. Uh, let's see, like this, I've already made one here, but let's do it again. Um, so for this mesh, if I use this wall instead, then the opaque mesh and the translucent mesh should probably be the same mesh. You can choose whatever and it will change into a completely different mesh when you're zooming in. But yeah, that's up to you. Um, and for their materials, I've like really basically just, just taken the concrete tiles material, which is in the starter content, and then I just made a translucent um, version of that for the other wall uh, or the wall that you can look through and the opaque wall it has collision set up like this blocking everything and the translucent is blocking everything except for path trace as you should be able to you know click through it for the tiles on the other side of the wall so this is also to show that you, know, you can make these as big as you want even though they have this index and all of that just disregard that just make them as big as you want and uh, look at the examples in the maps here, in the height map example, these blueprints where I have made walls consisting of several like meshes and uh, see how that's done too if you want to replicate something like that. Um, okay, uh, yeah, one more thing I guess, if you're using these sort of uh, height maps, um, if I 
let me just make a small staircase out of these two to demonstrate that you should be using probably uh, decals instead of instant static meshes for showing tiles in move range when using this. So let's go here. Um, so now that I'm using decals, it all disappears, right? But if I am not. then the blue tiles, transparent tiles, are still here. It doesn't matter that much for this, actually, but if you have many tiles on top of one another, then these like transparent blue tiles can add up and it will become difficult to see through. But yeah, just experiment with that yourself. Um, so you can just keep adding, having it crisscrossing, and make it as tall as you want. Just make sure that you increase the size of this bounding box to encompass everything you want to be able to walk on top of. Um, so that about does it for height maps without uh, looking into too much detail what's going on under the hood. Uh, so, and I will be looking into that in a later video, of course, when I will be looking into the blueprints and explain pathfinding to you and all of that. Uh, but for now, that's enough, I think. So I hope you will have a lot of fun um, using height maps and making stuff with it. Uh, there are a lot of possibilities when using this, and it has been a lot of work. So um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, that will be that for this video, I think, and uh, for the next video I will be looking into artificial intelligence and uh, all the features, um, the new artificial intelligence features and things related to that.